All right, what we're going to look at today is the concept of pressure. Pressure is the idea that when we apply a force to a surface, uh, there is an effect acting on that surface. And that effect is not only due to the force, but it is due to the force per unit area. So force divided by area is actually pressure. And this is an equation that we need to know, and this is an equation that is given to us on our equation sheet. Now, we're typically going to measure pressure in newtons per meter squared, or that is equivalent to what's called one Pascal, after the scientists who did a lot of work dealing with pressure. Other ways you might see pressure being measured is PSI, or bars, or uh, millimeters of mercury, or atmosphere. So those are all pretty common ways that we might measure pressure just depending on the scenario which we're dealing with. Okay. Now, what we're going to look at is the concept of pressure and how a fluid exerts pressure. What's true about a fluid is that when it is within a container, that fluid is going to exert a pressure in all directions on surfaces. So that means that my pressure is going to be pushing outwards on the sides as well as pushing down on the bottom. Or if I have a container of a different shape, I still will have pressure pushing in all directions. And the main thing is that that force always acts perpendicular to the surface. So in this case, the pressure is actually pushing upwards at an angle on the sides of this container as well as down as well as horizontally, just depending upon where that pressure is acting. So no matter what the shape is, the force that's acting on the surface is going to be perpendicular and it's always going to act in all directions on the surface. Now, what we need to understand is what is actually causing this pressure in a static fluid. And static is key here because it has to be a fluid that's not moving. We'll get into moving fluids later, but for right now, we're just focused on fluids that are stationary. And I apologize for that. Got a rotation there. So let's think about this. If we have a container that has an object sitting at the bottom or a pressure gauge here sitting on the bottom, what is causing pressure, right? It's filled with some fluid. And so we're gonna focus on the idea that let's think about just this top area of this object. Well, on top of that object is this column of water. And that column of water is getting pulled down by gravity. And because of that, it's actually gonna apply a force of gravity down on that top surface. And so how then would we understand what that pressure is? So because pressure is force per unit area, it's just going to be force over area, and that force is going to be the force of gravity, and I'm going to call it a liquid instead of the water, because it doesn't have to be water, but that's typically what we'll have. Uh, but of any... Now, if we look at that, Force is mass times gravity. So that's going to be the mass of the liquid times gravity divided by my area. Now, in fluids, mass can be really tricky, right? Fluids sometimes move around. Obviously, in this case, we're talking about static, but mass can be pretty tricky to figure out within a fluid. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the equation for density. Density equals mass divided by volume. And we're going to solve for that in terms of mass being the density times the volume. And I'm going to take this equation here and I'm going to plug it in there. So I'm going to replace mass of the liquid with the density times the volume because that is the mass of the liquid. So pressure now is going to be the density of the liquid times the volume times gravity. And this is the volume of the liquid divided by my area. Well, if we think about the volume that is here of this water column, that's going to be the depth of the column or the height of the column 
multiplied by this area. We need length times width times height or area times height. And so we have an area here and we're gonna multiply it by this height there. So this height, right, or the depth of the water uh, multiplied by that area is going to be my volume. So I'm gonna rewrite this as the density of the liquid times area times the height times gravity divided by my area. And the cool thing is because those areas are equal, they're gonna cancel out. And what I'm gonna be left with is pressure equals density of the liquid times the height times gravity, okay? And that's actually uh, the main equation that we're trying to get to. So this is the density of the liquid. This is the height or the depth in the liquid. And then that's the acceleration of gravity. And any of these is, or the combination of those, excuse me, is going to be my gauge pressure. That's how I would calculate gauge pressure within any liquid. Now that's gauge pressure and gauge pressure is different than absolute pressure, and that absolute pressure is basically um, gauge pressure plus atmospheric pressure. So gauge pressure is measures the pressure above and beyond atmospheric pressure. So in the lab that we perform, remember we, we had um, a container that had water in it or a fluid, right? And what we did was we just measured the pressure versus different depths. And we created a graph that was pressure versus depth, or H in this case. And we created a graph that ended up looking something like this, right? There was definitely this Y intercept, okay? And from Y equals MX plus B, we were able to say that pressure equals, now we know it's rho times G times H plus this pressure atmospheric and that's what this po stands for that's that y intercept so y intercept is well if i have zero depth which would be right here i still have a pressure that's my atmospheric pressure so my absolute pressure which would be this capital p here would be atmospheric pressure plus my gauge pressure so the actual equation that's written in your reference sheet is going to have a look of p of absolute pressure equals atmospheric pressure plus gauge pressure. And that's what that would look like. So absolute atmospheric gauge. And that's how that goes together. Container with a flow. And this is valuable to know, and we'll just take a quick look at atmospheric pressure, right? We can think of atmospheric pressure as just the same idea as just a big right? So the earth is a container, there's this gas that surrounds it of air. Um, and it's just a big air column, right? And the higher that we get, the lower the atmospheric pressure is until we get right out here into, you know, the top of our atmosphere or the thermosphere, 310 miles from the surface of the earth, we're going to have an atmospheric pressure of zero, um, or zero PSI or zero um, Pascals, because there is no more air up there pushing down on us. Where as if we go here, you know, all this air up here is pushing down at this level, all this air is pushing down here, all this air is pushing here, and then all this air above us is pushing down on the surface of the earth. And that's where we are. And that uh, pressure is about 14.7 PSI, or uh, about one atmosphere is roughly one times 10 to the fifth uh, pascals or newtons per meter squared, and that's about 100,000 newtons per meter squared. So that's what air pressure is for us. About 15 pounds per square inch, or if we had a meter squared, about 100,000 newtons, 100,000 apples pushing down on every square meter. Um, so we can still think about this and the same idea. Now, the tough thing with air pressure is that the density is not constant, right? Uh, as we get higher up, our density becomes less, or our air becomes less and less dense, right? So we, we can't necessarily use that same equation of rho gh, but we could simplify it. And if we were to say that the density of the air is constant, right, what would that look like? 
Um, but it's the same idea of a liquid in a container, the air around the earth acts in the same manner.